Systemic lupus erythematosus is a chronic, multi-system autoimmune disease, and it affects so many organs because it's driven by an immune response to fragments of DNA and proteins from the cell's nucleus, which are found ubiquitously all over the body. Its pathogenesis is likely multifactorial, involving a trigger from an environmental agent in a genetically susceptible host. Now, this immune response probably starts from one or two things. One, a failure to rapidly clear cells through apoptosis, and this usually presents exposure of nuclear antigens to the immune system. Or two, from an issue with the process of actually establishing immune tolerance to self. Lupus can cause a huge number of clinical features. This is reflected in its broad diagnostic criteria. A diagnosis can be made if 4 out of 11 are met. There are three dermatological features you can get. A malar rash, which is an erythematous lesion that spans across the bridge of the nose and the cheeks. 2. A discoid rash. These are dry patches that evolve to form red plaques. And finally, photosensitivity. Next, there are three membranous issues. Oral ulcers, which are usually painless. Arthritis, which is non-erosive and sericitis, which is typically inflammation of the pericardium or the lung linings, resulting in pleurisy. There are three issues that you can note in the blood, hematological cell line issues like hemolytic anemia, leukopenia, or thrombocytopenia, immunological features, including a positive serology for a specific antibody, finally, having a positive anti-nuclear antibody. The last two are neuropsychiatric issues like seizures or psychosis and renal features like persistent proteinuria or cellular casts. For investigations, let's focus on some core initial tests. First, bedside tests like urinalysis to screen for nephritis. Next, blood tests. A full blood count might demonstrate hematological dyscrasias, and a coagulation screen would indicate the presence of lupus anticoagulant. Finally, and probably the most important, let's discuss serological investigations. Anti-nuclear antibody, or ANA, is very sensitive for SLE. Conversely, anti-DS DNA and anti-Smith antibodies are highly specific. Let's discuss management by considering non-pharmacological, pharmacological, and symptom-specific treatment. You should encourage every patient to adopt a healthy lifestyle with a healthy diet, regular exercise, and quit smoking. Pharmacologically, immunomodulatory drugs are usually required. Hydroxychloroquine is usually recommended for most people with SLE. Management of SLE's sequelae is patient-dependent, but in general, mucosal and cutaneous features may benefit from topical steroids. In mild sericitis, NSAIDs may be used to control pain sufficiently, but for immune-mediated cytopenia or renal issues, systemic immunomodulatory therapy may help by using steroids or something like cyclophosphamide as well. I've got a great mnemonic to remember all of the 11 diagnostic criteria. I'm damn sharp. Immunoglobins, malar rash, discoid rash, arthritis, mucositis, neurological issues, sericitis, hematological dyscrasias, ANA, renal disease, and photosensitivity. Thanks for watching Townsend Teaching.